Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And Wargaming just revealed the contents for their loot boxes for 2021. And in today's video, I'm going to let you know everything that there is new coming to the game, as well as your opportunities to get some of the old, older content from last year if you manage to miss it. So firstly, when are the boxes coming out? The boxes are coming out this Wednesday. They'll be released at 7 a.m., in Europe time, or should I say Central European time, and they're also going to be released on Wednesday at 3.20 a.m. Pacific time and 5.20 Central time or 6.20 Eastern time if you are living in US time zones. So before I jump in and show you all of the exciting new content that will be coming as a loot box exclusive this year, I want to give a forward about loot boxes and how I feel about them inside video games. I think this is almost predatory tactics from the video gaming market. I think it starts to blur the line between a video game that I feel like we all grew up with and slot machines and one-armed bandits that for quite rightly, you have to be 18 to even play. And I would never recommend playing those kind of games because really the only person who's gonna win is the person who takes your money out of the, uh, the slot machine at the end of the day, AKA the pub that it's in. You certainly know the boundaries of legality are being pushed when Wargaming have to put a disclaimer on their homepage right below their video that's saying in compliance with local legislation, large boxes are not available in Belgium. And so in the strongest possible way, I'd like to condemn the practice of putting new content inside loot boxes, loot crates, whatever you want to call them, with no possibility to be able to buy new content separately outside of them. So with that in mind, let's watch Wargaming's video that was released on their homepage and is also available on their YouTube channel if you want to check it out yourself without a Muppet like me talking over it. The magical holiday ops train is already speeding toward us, filled to the brim with festive spirit and wonderful surprises. Hopefully some new tanks, right? But also not. I would like them to be available separately. Oh, I'm so conflicted. Select I love new content. Boxes from four collections. Each one will give you a guaranteed reward. So let me just clarify, the four boxes give you decorations for your di four different collections. And so if there's a collection style that you absolutely, utterly want to have, then you're probably best to buy boxes for that style because you're, you're very much guaranteed to be able to get it. However, if you want to get all of the styles, you should probably think about buying a, a variety of the loot boxes to be able to get at least enough level five decorations throughout. And then the extras you have, you can break down and use in the, the decor rider to be able to complete your collection. Gold and two decorations of the corresponding collection. The level five one decorations level five are awesome. Decoration and one random. Especially if you want to, especially if you want to complete your collection early or you want to just get festive atmosphere 10 early, then that will allow you to be able to gain kind of early access to the discounts that all of the free to play players are going to take a week or maybe two weeks or even three weeks to be able to unlock. Addition, the box will contain some additional surprises. I'm, I mean, I like the way that they present it, that you're buying the decoration and that the gold is the additional surprise. <laughs> I wonder why they're doing that. More gold. Days of World of Tanks premium account. Credits. Well, actually, I know perfectly why they're doing this. I'm not going to mince my words. What they're effectively doing is trying to say, look, we're giving you 250 gold, which is the base price of the one euro, one dollar loot box, and we're giving you the decorations as well. So they're trying to suggest, because they probably want to put it to any kind of gambling authority, that that's what you're purchasing and anything that you else you get on top is what you're getting for free. That's the line that they're going to push. But unfortunately, I think that if there weren't these extra surprises as they call them inside the loot boxes then people probably wouldn't be purchasing them in the first place so i feel like that's a bit underhanded 3d styles or one of the premium vehicles there are three new premium the tanks yeah it's it's the an exclusive with an most likely auto reloading system i just want to clarify i have no idea whether if on wednesday wargaming do the right thing and make these exclusive exclusive tanks available outside of the loot boxes as well. Just charge us $50 for it. I can't believe that there's a gaming company alive that wouldn't want its customers to give it $50 to be able to buy one new tank out of a game that has 600 in them. It just feels a bit predatory to me. Heavy tank. 
If you want to see my full review on the Passante C45, I just released it a few days ago. This one I haven't played yet. An interesting British tank destroyer. British tank destroyer. Nice gun and an autoloader with four shells. How bizarre, a British autoloading tank destroyer with four shells. There aren't any British tank destroyer autoloaders. Is this one just going to be a one-off to try and give a, a flavor or something different in the British tank destroyer tech tree? Or is this suggesting that Wargaming might have a whole line of British turreted autoloaders that could be coming eventually? I personally think the former rather than the latter. So why you should stay tuned to the channel because of course you know I'm going to review a new tier 8 tank as it comes into the game. Let's just take a very quick look at the GSOL 108 and that's very tricky for me to do because you know I like to go into depth. So this thing has a four round autoloader 1505 dpm that looks awful compared to the new Basante with regards to its dpm but similar to the t77 320 alpha damage means that this thing is going to be able to pack 1280 damage per magazine Woof, that thing looks monstrous also it's currently saying that this thing has a two second intra clip autoloader on the tanks gg website although wargaming's website doesn't say anything about that so they might have nerfed that value because they actually nerfed the damage per minute from what is available on tanks gg if that is the case being able to deliver 1280 damage within six seconds of the first shot is going to be absolutely monstrous and to be able to divide your shells amongst your opponents as well as this tank looking like it's actually really fast is it really that fast yes it goes at 60 forwards although it has a mediocre power to weight ratio might be a good one for a turbo but you're probably going to be using vents vertical stabilizers and a rotation device on this tank. Armor-wise, it looks like it's not exactly useless with regards to its turret armor at 152, but when I look at it, I mean, it's going to take a hit from some tier 6 and tier 7s. Maybe it's got some funky ricochet angles. You're not going to really be bouncing too much, but oh my word, 11 degrees of gun depression. Ooh. Okay, stay tuned to the channel for a full deep dive on this one. Looks good. Okay, so now there are going to be non-new tanks. So the Borask, I just featured that on the channel the other day and I had no idea this thing was going to be inside the loot boxes. That's an absolute beast of a tank. The ISU-152K, it's pretty much a premium version of the ISU-152. It's a, it's a, it's a, again, a beast, but it's inaccurate and it's very cumbersome in close quarters combat, but still a very good tank. Okay, so apparently they can also contain lower tier vehicles. This is the Locust, the T-15, the Matilda Black Prince, and also the T-78. And the French but there is also a new one. What is the new one? Sherman with an auto loader. A French Sherman with an auto loader? We have to dive in a little bit deeper than that. So I managed to find it on the Wargaming's website and it's called M4A1FL10. Hold on, that is the EBR turret, right? So this thing, a lot like the British G-Saw, has really bad damage per minute, 135 alpha damage, but a four round clip with a 1.75 second intraclip reload. Yeah, I don't think that looks very good, actually, if that intraclip reload stays that high. And while dealing 540 damage within 5.25 seconds of the first shot is is by no means terrible. I think when you combine it with a fairly long reload time of 18 seconds, it's not exactly going to allow you to clip multiple vehicles. The mobility on this vehicle, it's pretty good. Definitely not incredible. And if it only has six degrees of gun depression, oh, this one's going to be a bit of a stinker on a ridge line. But 370 meters view range means it's actually going to be able to spot for itself. Does it have any armor? I don't expect it does if it's French. No. Oh, this thing looks pretty mediocre. But anything with an autoloader, you can still make work. And again, stay tuned. It's going to be featured in a full tank review on the channel. The surprises don't end there. Oh, what else have you got? You can also find five new 3D styles in large Cool, boxes. I love the 3D styles. I just wish they were available for maybe $10. If you want to charge $15 inside the store, it'd be really good if they were available outside of the loot boxes as well. The 60 TP oh, the oh, one of my favorites. Of in fact, I think this is the best tech tree heavy tank. I love that. Oh, yes, son. All right, we can take a, a bit of a deeper look as the styles are featured down here. Oh, this one looks pretty. I like it. I think that this regular 60 TP did look like it just needed a little bit more chunk to it. And to put like <laughs> an anti-aircraft gun on top to have some boxes. I can't quite make out what that is there, but that looks pretty funky as well. As well as some barrels on the back. Yeah, this one looks good. This is definitely one of my favorite tech tree tanks and I thoroughly recommend it to everyone out there. If you want to know more about the tank, I featured it on the channel a couple of weeks ago in uh, a how I managed to get through Ranked or it was called like a Tutor Me video. Definitely go and check out that one. What's up next? The mouse. 
a real land cruiser protected from attacks from all directions. Did you see that that had like a Ketten Crad on the back or something? Oh, that thing looks absolutely glorious. Oh, no way. Oh, my lord. Yeah, it's got like a blooming Ketten Crad or whatever it's called on the back. I can't, I'm probably completely forgetting what it actually is called. That thing looks incredible. Absolutely ridiculous. This thing looks like the German super heavy that I wanted it to. Well, I mean, the mouse as it is, is already perfection. But let's be honest, putting a, a quad barrel auto cannon on the top of it and just making it absolutely thick. Yeah, oh, ooh, I'm looking forward to that one. Oh, no. No. No, not like this. No, no, not a Conqueror gun carriage. Are you actually kidding me? Oh, it kind of feels like probably one of the most lackluster skins. At least we've got that going for us. Everybody who doesn't really like all of the uh, all of the artillery in the game. Although I still think that there are probably going to be a lot of people taking this one out for a spin during the holiday season to to give us lots of Christmas presents. Yay! The However, ooh. covered in pine branches. It See, is, <sighs> is ready for both ambushing and aggressive assaults. I like it. But let's be honest, the, the best style for the SW1 is to put the Sakura style or the, the Cherry Blossom style on this tank. I think that one, in my opinion, looks way better than just putting a few extra branches on it. I think this one looks a little naked, actually. But, oh, actually, the searchlight on the front, maybe it was just the video that gave me that impression. Yeah, this one looks pretty cool as well. They all look cool. Wargaming do very well at making cool tanks. That's what they're best at. The WZ-111 5A, equipped with flamethrowers, it brings terror to the battlefield like an ancient dragon. Yeah, yeah, do they? Do the flamethrowers actually work? That one looks pretty wild as well. Oh, all these styles are pretty funky. Again, I just wish that they were available without having to gamble an unknown amount of money to be able to, to get them. Yeah, I like this one. The space protection down the side isn't actually going to provide you with space protection. Imagine if they did. Imagine if Styles gave you extra space... Pro no, no, why did I say that? No, I can hear Wargaming's marketing department already, like, doing cash register noises. The idea of that. And there's even more on offer. 3D styles from the previous year make their return to the boxes. I'm not sure what I think about that. Obviously, it's great for everybody who was unable to to get one to be able to get it now obviously i'm a i guess i'm a little bit salty that something that i had that i felt a little bit special a little bit rare inside the game is now going to be diminished and i feel that considering that there's only one style for the tanks most people are going to use that style on the tanks and so it feels like more and more of the vehicles are just going to look the same rather than actually putting a style on and usually to be stylish you've got to be a little bit different the other thing that worries me about this is let's say that you didn't want any of the previous styles and you only want one of the new styles, then how is Wargaming going to distribute them? Are they going to give you the old... Well, they probably won't give you the old styles first, but if it doesn't give you the new styles first before it gives you the old styles, then if you want one of the new ones from the current boxes but you haven't got any of the other ones, you might have to gamble a hell of a lot to be able to actually get what you want. It's a great opportunity to get a style that's missing from your collection. Or to increase the chance that you have Select to large boxes buy boxes right to get the new garage. ones. Or in the premium shop. Yep. May the new year bring great things to you. It's really interesting that they do highlight that this is the content and then everything else in... <laughs> You almost feel like it needs to be an even smaller font is the extra. Whereas this is what everyone's buying it for. Nobody's really buying it for this, at least in my opinion. So all in all, what do I think about the contents this year? Well, it's very similar to all of the previous years. Obviously, the most sought after piece of content from all of these loot boxes will be the Basante C45. I think that this is a great premium tank. You will have found that out from my review on the tank on the channel a few days ago. And clearly people are going to want to have a brand new mechanic and to be able to get a head start for the Italian auto reloading heavy tanks to be able to train up some crews. Although in theory, you could just train them up using your Progetto 46 
and then retrain them to heavy, you're going to lose some, some crew skills unless you do it for gold when the new heavy line comes out. The G-Saw 1008, I'm going to hold my opinion of the vehicle until I do a full tank review on it in the upcoming days. But really, how can a turreted tank destroyer with gun depression with an autoloader that can do 1,280 damage be bad? I think this one might be a bit of a, a dark horse for this holiday season. ISU-152K, it's just a big boom alpha damage tank. Another one that's really interesting is the Borask. I'd say this is the joint best tier 8 premium medium tank for a very good player, on par with the Progetto 46. However, I think that other players might struggle in the vehicle, but there's a reason why the Borask has the highest average win rate for a tier 8 premium medium tank, and that's because, as I showed in my video yesterday, the thing is an absolute performer. With regards to the lower tier premium tanks that you're going to be able to get here, the T-78 is pretty good. I couldn't really care about a Locust. The Matilda Black Prince, yeah, I mean, the Black Prince at tier 7 is pretty poor. But the Matilda Black Prince at tier 5, it can be good inside a good matchup. But really, you'd still have to want a Seal Club or play at tier 5 in World of Tanks. And the Panzerkampfwagen T-15, no one really cares about that in my opinion at least. At least you do get garage slots if you need those. With regards to the styles, I think Wargaming have done a fantastic job. I just worry if, for example, you're the kind of player who only enjoys the 60TP, or maybe you only enjoy the mouse, or maybe you only enjoy the SDB1. How many loot boxes are you going to have to gamble with to be able to get the style that you want? I really wish that these were just available for purchase outside of the loot boxes. Put them up for 10 or $15. And the fact that you're going to be able to get last year's holiday op styles as well kind of decreases the chance of you possibly getting the one that you want and just getting one of the ones that maybe you don't really care about. It should also be mentioned that over the last couple of years, Wargaming put in two special crew members into the loot boxes, which actually had two zero skill perks, making them the best crew in World of Tanks history and great vehicles to be able to put inside your low crew tanks. Like the Manticore, it's only got two crew members, so you need to get a lot of skills amongst those two crew members. So by having two zero skill perks, it allows you to get up to seven skills and even eight skills as if you're only going for five or six with a regular crew. And if after watching this video, there's some of the content that you want from these loot boxes, but you don't know how likely you are to be able to get the vehicles in question, then wait for my video. This Wednesday, I'm going to open up a ton of loot boxes in a YouTube video and then calculate exactly how much gold you get for your buck, as well as the likelihood of you all getting one of the two truly special, or even, should we say, three truly special pieces of content this year. And I want to finish this video by talking about what I really think is a missed opportunity for Wargaming for this Christmas period. I know that they want to sell a lot of loot boxes. Companies want to make money. That's understandable. But I would implore you, Wargaming, to not encourage your player base, of which a significant minority are children, to gamble inside loot boxes at such a special time of the year to be able to get new content. What is stopping you from selling the two new premium tanks for $50 inside the premium store? Is that not enough money to make for a new piece of content? Do you want to have to fill people's garages up with gold and premium time and credits that they may or may not want or a whole bunch of other vehicles while getting unlucky and possibly missing the one that they could be gambling to be able to get? I also would like to say that I think there was a real missed opportunity to put the Bisonte C45 as the mission marathon instead of the Object 274A and then release the Italian heavy tank tech tree before Christmas to give the World of Tanks player base really something to jump into and to grind over this period rather than saving it for January to try and release after the holiday ops has gone away. The last time that you did that was in the 2016 Christmas period where we saw more people playing World of Tanks than ever in the history of the game. And look how the momentum was carried forward into the March and April period, suggesting to me that you shouldn't really be worried about blowing all of your content at Christmas to worry about maybe having a dry period afterwards. Maybe this is just me being cynical, but I feel that for the most important time of the year for Europe and NA to be playing World of Tanks, to try and sell us loot boxes instead of give us a new tech tree to be able to grind through is kind of telling about Wargaming's motivations. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, give it a thumbs up. But if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Let me know what you think about all of the new vehicles that are going to be released inside loot box exclusives and which is your favorite style out of the new 
ones that are going to be released on Wednesday. And stay tuned to the channel, loads more content coming right up to keep you as informed as possible so you can make the best decisions. That's always been my goal. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.